Hey, welcome to another Reformer workout. My name is Melanie. If you're looking for Rebecca, she's on vacation. She'll be back soon. We're going to do a pretty quick express uh, Reformer workout for people who work at desks all the time. Uh, I'm one of those people. I get really tight through the chest. Uh, basically, all the muscles down the front line of my body, chest, shoulders, hips get really compressed and tight from sitting in a chair and working on a keyboard and those back muscles and all the muscles down the back line of the body, glutes, hamstrings, back get really weak. So we're going to work on that today. Um, please get a Pilates ball or a foam roller or maybe a rolled up towel nearby. Anything like that is fine. We're going to start on one heavy and one light spring or one red and one blue. So headrest will be up. I'm going to come to lying down on the reformer. I'm going to get my hair out of the way. And what we're going to do is you're going to grab the straps and you're going to place them onto the arches of the feet. So find them wherever you may. Find a little bit of space between your shoulders and the shoulder blocks and your legs are going to go up to 90 degrees. So take a moment to get really balanced. Make sure both hip bones are really nice and steady on the mat. Legs will be in parallel, so knees facing your nose. Arms long by your sides. Roll the shoulders wide. Big breath in. Exhale. Press away with control. Keeping the rib cage down. Inhale. Draw the legs right back up to that 90 degree position. Deep breath in. Exhale. Lower down and bring it back up. So if you're beginning, a good place to start is down to 45 degrees or wherever you can comfortably maintain a good pelvic control and alignment. If you're a little more advanced and you're not arching through the back, you're able to keep the rib cage down, feel free to lo lower those legs as far as you comfortably can. So what we're doing with this one is we're really working on building up strength, starting to warm up through the hamstrings and glutes here before we move on to some slightly tougher backline body exercises. So as you go for this straight leg press, very important to think about making sure you're pressing evenly through the straps. If you start to feel like one foot is taking control or pushing harder than the other, or your hip bones are starting to bobble, really focus on evening that out, putting a little more pressure through the unstable side. Now we're going to move into leg circles. So press the legs down to that comfortable low point, open them wide, draw them around, up to 90 or wherever your 90 is, and we continue. Nice and fluid, press out, draw around, up, back to 90. Just really warming up. None of this should be really forceful or super hard. We're gonna take about eight of these on your own time. So for my count, we've got five. And just for your awareness, I filmed a pretty long 45 minute version of this workout that was uh, very focused on strength yesterday and lost the audio completely. So we're gonna do an express version today because I'm feeling a little under the weather, but if that's something you'd like to see in the future, a full length version of this workout with maybe a little bit more strength emphasis, please leave me a comment and let me know. So we're gonna go for two more here. And last one, once you're back up to 90 degrees, we're gonna reverse open at the top, draw down around together, squeeze the inner thighs, knees still facing your nose and back up to 90. Continue on for eight. So definitely you're gonna to start to feel warming up through the inner thighs. Those are also important postural and pelvic stability muscles. Good, and once again, make sure that you're you know, exhibiting even pressure through those feet, as, especially as those feet go wide, you start pressing through the straps. You may wanna take this to a pretty full range of motion, you may not. It's completely fine to keep the circles a little bit smaller if it feels better for you today. Let's go for two more, making sure the bottom of the sacrum stays really heavy on the mat, you're not peeling the hips up off of the carriage. Good. Last one, let's bring the legs back up to 90. We're now gonna switch the feet to Pilates V, heels together, toes apart. Flex the toes, let's go to frog circles. Keeping the heels together, knees bend and go wide. We're gonna extend out to 45, back to 90. Bend, drawing the heels toward the pelvis. Press them away, squeeze through the inner thighs, back up to 90 degrees. Let's keep this going for about another five. This is four, making sure the ribs are staying down, the back, Bottom rib is still keeping contact with the mat. You're not arching up through that rib cage. Good. Flexing the toes, really reaching the toes toward your nose as you press through those straps, getting a nice flex at the ankle. And really focus on trying to keep those heels together. Good. Let's go make this the last one. 
Now we reverse, legs press straight down to 45, bend the knees, keep those heels together. This is where it gets a little tricky. Extend up to 90 and press down. So this is the warm up portion of our routine today. And we'll get into more of the postural muscles through the back in a few minutes. Good, feeling a little bit more heat through the inner thighs. Let's go for about another two. And one. Extend up to 90, soles of the feet together, knees go wide, butterfly stretch. You're gonna hold onto those ropes for support. Let the heels drift down and the knees are gonna go wide. You can let the back relax a little bit. You don't wanna arch up with the rib cage. You still want that to be nice and heavy and down. But the lumbar spine here can get a little bit relaxed and curved here if you like. Good. Let's take the uh, straps off the feet. You're gonna stay on that one red, one blue spring, or if you want a little more support, you can switch to two reds, which I'm gonna do right now. And we're gonna go for our reformer bridges. So bringing the head down to a lowered headrest. It's very important. You wanna make sure the headrest is down. The feet are gonna come hip distance apart, arches of the feet on the foot bar, arms long by your sides. Double check, make your headrest, make sure your headrest is down. Give yourself a little bit of room between the shoulder blocks and your shoulders. We're gonna to start to roll up into a bridge while trying to keep the carriage really still. So ribs down, big breath in, exhale without moving the bed away from the stopper. Curl the pelvis under, peel the spine up one bone at a time. Find a diagonal line from your knees to your hips to your shoulders. Big breath in, exhale, belly button goes in toward your spine. Roll down one vertebra at a time until the bottom of your sacrum hits the mat. That's the very lowest part of your spine. Deep breath in, let's keep it going. Really trying to keep that carriage in at the stopper. If it moves a little bit, that's fine. Just do your best to keep it controlled. And each time you roll up, you really wanna think about <laughs> kind of peeling each little segment of your spine up off of the carriage. The visual that res resonates with me the most is, I don't know if you guys ever had fruit roll-ups growing up, but that same sensation of when you're peeling the fruit leather or the fruit roll-up off of the backing. It's the same kind of gradual peel you want here. Next time you're in that bridge, you're gonna hold it up, keep the hips lifted, extend the legs straight, big breath in, bend the knees, draw the carriage back in, find that diagonal line one more time. Big breath in, exhale, abs stay engaged, glutes are squeezing all the way back in. If you wanna take this a little more briskly, moving a little more quickly, feel free to do that. I'm gonna stay slow and steady today. Good, we're gonna go for two more, and then we're gonna make it a little more interesting. Good. Last one, out, and bring it all the way back in. Roll the spine down, close the stopper, we're gonna reset. So now what we're gonna do is kind of a modified semicircle exercise, which is really nice for spinal mobility. So arms reach long, big breath in, exhale, curl the pelvis under, find that bridge position, keep the hips lifted, press away. We're gonna roll the spine down till the butt hits the, the carriage. Bring the bed into the stopper and roll back up again. Hips stay high, press out, roll the spine down, draw the carriage back in. Back of the neck stays really long. You're not crunching the chin down or arching it up. Roll the spine down, bring it back in one more time in this direction. Your hamstring should really be working pretty hard. Now we're gonna reverse. Hips stay down as you straighten the legs out. Here, we're gonna lift the hips up. Keep the butt lifted as you draw the carriage back into that bridge position. Roll the spine down, three more. Exhale. Hips are down, lift the hips when the carriage is all the way out, bring it in, support yourself with your abs, roll the spine down once that carriage is at the stopper, two more. Exhale as you press, lift, in, roll it down, press away, lift, draw it all the way back in, roll it down, very nice. We're gonna go for a figure four stretch now. Crossing your right ankle over your left knee, grab onto your left thigh or your left shin, whatever feels best. Draw the legs in toward your pelvis and let your neck relax. You can rock your head side to side. You can put a little pressure into your right thigh with your right knee. You can also extend the left leg up to the sky or the ceiling, rock your side to side, whatever feels good to you is fine. 
And when you're ready, we're gonna move on to the other side. Left ankle over right, thread your hands through the legs, grab the shin or the thigh, and take the same variations that felt good to you on the other side. And all this lower body hamstring strengthening is really important because getting strong muscles through the back of the body, really important for making sure your body can really hold itself up in standing and sitting positions. And next, we're gonna move on to a little upper back strengthening. So roll on up to sitting. So we've switched onto one red spring. We're gonna move into upper back strengthening and a little bit of chest opening next to round out this workout. So we're gonna to come to kneeling with our knees up against the shoulder blocks. You can have your hips or butt resting down on your heels or standing up with the hips above the knees. That's what I'm gonna to take today. Get a little bit of lower body work into this too. Your toes can be curled under or flat. Big breath in, rib cage down, squeeze the glutes. Big breath in, exhale, press the palms back behind the hips. Shoulder blades squeeze in and down together. Relax and bring it back to starting. Big breath in, exhale. Think about the shoulder blades kissing together. Another visual to think about is the left shoulder blade should tuck into the right back pocket and the right shoulder blade should tuck into the left back pocket, kind of like on a diagonal. Collarbone should stay wide without popping the rib cage. We really want to keep that oriented down toward the pelvis while rolling the shoulders back and squeezing the shoulders, shoulder blades together. Excuse me. Definitely feeling some work through the triceps here. And give your neck a little attention too. You want to think about tucking the chin in so you almost get a little bit of a double chin without cranking the chin down. We just want to send the ears back like your head is a car and you're backing it up. So really think about that shoulder blade squeeze here. That's the most important part of this exercise. Even if you only get a little small range of motion, if you're feeling that activity around the shoulder blades, that's the most important thing. Last two. And one, press behind you. Grow an inch or a couple centimeters. Look over your right shoulder. Collarbone stays wide. Stand tall. Look over your left shoulder. Collarbone stays wide. Back to center and bring the carriage in toward the stopper. You're now gonna to come to sitting and your feet are gonna to come to the headrest. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna place these straps over the elbows onto the biceps. Kind of like you're wearing some very cool arm cuffs. And we're gonna bring our arms into a W position. So we're sitting up as tall as we can, sending that tailbone back behind us. Still on a red spring or if you need a little bit more, you can add a, a yellow spring to this. Palms are flat and wide. You're making a W with your elbows. So they're bent at kind of a 45 degree angle. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna send the arms back so the elbows are going in and down. Ribs are not popping up, they're still staying oriented down. And bring the arms back to starting without collapsing through the chest. So pressing the arms back. Once again, tucking those shoulder blades in and down and return to starting. Let's go for eight. And back, seven, find that shoulder blade squeeze, lower traps really firing here. And if you feel the upper traps, kind of like almost your neck muscles firing here, bring the elbows a little bit lower. They don't have to be this high, especially if you're feeling tension up top, you're really trying to recruit those lower traps. So bringing the elbows low is a good strategy if you're starting to feel some discomfort there. You can always work on disengaging the upper traps once you build more of that connection to your lowers. Good, we've got four more. This is three. Keeping those ribs oriented down, two. And one, good. Close the stopper, roll forward just a little bit. We're gonna scoot your butt as far as you can forward. It can be a little tucked under if you need to without trying to actively do that. You're gonna grab onto the ropes above the hardware. So basically above the metal bits onto where those ropes begin. We're gonna begin sitting up super tall and you can pull the carriage away from the stopper a little bit. So sit up as high as you can. What we're gonna do is practice some roll down. So you definitely want some space between uh, where your butt is and the back, of the back edge of the mat. Big breath in, knees together, you're gonna to exhale, start to roll down, collarbone stays wide, you're gonna find a deep C curve here. 
Belly button stays pulled in toward your spine. Exhale, keeping those feet planted on the carriage. Roll up, unfurl the spine, sit up as tall as you can without flaring those ribs. Deep breath in. Exhale, curl the pelvis under, just like we did in the bridges, trying to roll the spine down one vertebra at a time without collapsing the shoulders. Those stay really wide. Belly button pressed in toward your spine. Exhale, start to peel up. Sit up nice and tall. Unfurl that lumbar spine, get it as nice and, and tall as you can. Let's take a few more, big breath in. Rolling up, shoulders roll back. Keep them wide, deep breath in, exhale. Your chin is gonna float toward your chest just a little bit as you roll up here. And each time you roll down, let's go for the last one. Recruiting your abs here to stabilize. You have some support from these ropes, but you can really do a lot of good control through the abs. Very important for a nice open posture, okay? So we're gonna set the straps down just for a moment. We're gonna do one of my favorite openers using that ball or your foam roller or a towel. So I'm gonna to flip to one blue spring. If you need a little less intensity, you can do a yellow spring or an extra light spring. If you want more, you're, you're very strong in your upper body, you could also do a red. So we're gonna grab your ball or your rolled up towel or your foam roller. If you're using the towel or the foam roller, place it lengthwise. You're gonna have that ball be pretty close to the back edge of the machine. You're gonna scoot your butt as far forward as you can, so probably pretty close to those shoulder blocks. Grab the straps in your hands. You're gonna sit up really tall. So straps will be um, in your hands, excuse me, palms facing down. We're gonna find a deep C curve. So your back is actually gonna rest right up against that ball. You may need to adjust a little bit. It's not cute, but it works. And we're gonna find a deep curve. What we're gonna do is hold that curve, palms down, collarbone wide, we're gonna lift the shoulders, lift, excuse me, lift the hands up above the shoulders. Don't lift the shoulders, that's not a good strategy. And bring it back down. So palms are down, they're forward as you lift up. Abs are still engaged and lower down. So once again, we're not collapsing through the shoulders, collarbone stays wide. We're gonna stay here in this lift for a couple more reps. And then soon we're gonna start to take some extension over that ball for nice thoracic extension, thoracic mobility. It's really juicy if you get really stiff in your upper back or feel like your shoulders lift forward or roll forward a lot. So that was more than a couple. I got too busy talking. We're gonna do one more. This time as you lift the hands up, you're gonna reach the palms up and over. Let your upper back go over that ball. That feels so nice. Draw them out to a T, chin comes toward your chest. Hands come back to starting, flip your palms to face down. That's such a good chest stretch too. Really, really good all around her. Palms down, hands go up, shoulders are down. Reach the palms up overhead, arch your back over that ball. Hands come around, chin to chest. Wow, that's really one I need to work on. That is, feels great, but it's really tough for me. I'm very stiff in my th upper thoracic spine. Reach up and over, feel the chest stretch. Hands go around and back to starting. Let's do two more. If you need to shift your position, go for it. Find what feels good. Up, extend over that ball. Hands go around, chin toward your chest, back to starting. Last one, really milk this. This is nice for shoulder strength as well as thoracic mobility. Chest opening, man, what a good one. All right, close the carriage, roll up to sitting, release those straps down by your sides, and we're gonna get rid of that ball just for now. And let's stretch out the hips. We're doing an express one today, so we're gonna keep it light. So it doesn't matter if the headrest is up or down, we're gonna come to kneeling, but please put on one red spring. And we're gonna do a couple stretches here. So place your right foot next to the machine. Ooh, that was noisy. Left foot up against the shoulder block. Both hands are gonna be on the foot bar. And what we're gonna do is curl the pelvis under, find a little bit of flexion through the upper spine without sending the carriage way, way back. You're just gonna open up that left hip while keeping the pelvis scooped under. Feel a nice stretch through the hip flexors on the left and bring it back under your hip. So we're not 
Shifting our weight all the way back. We're just keeping that deep scoop. Stretching out the hip flexors, really targeting the psoas here, which is such a tricky, sticky muscle if you sit a lot. Because the reason why we want to open up and lengthen through the hip flexors is if you're sitting at a computer all day long, not only are your shoulders rolling forward a lot of the time and you're building a lot of tension through the chest, but those hip flexors get so tight when they're bent at a right angle sitting down all day. So this one, really good for targeting those muscles. Good, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do exactly what I said not to do in the last variation. You're just gonna really let your hips relax and the carriage back as far as you like. You're, you'll see I'm not really so focused on keeping that pelvis scooped under, really, really letting the lumbar spine flex as well. Make sure your shoulders are nice and wide. Draw the carriage in, just relax into this one more time. Big breath in, breathe through it. And really let your hips sink down. Open up here. This is the treat time. Really enjoy it, please. <laughs> Good. Bring it back in. Let's go for the other side. So close the carriage. Draw your left foot to the side of the machine. Right foot up against that shoulder block. We're going to start with that deep pelvic scoop under. Hands to the foot bar. Big scoop under and just open up that right hip without moving anything else. If you want to go for that really exaggerated flexion in the upper spine that can sometimes increase the intensity of the psoas stretch here. Just send it away and back. Make sure you're still breathing. Good. Now let's free ourselves up. Let that lumbar spine let go. That low back. Proud chest. Collarbone is wide. And my right hip is so much tighter. You may have one side that is Totally fine, one side that is really sticky for me, that's my right side, has been for a long time. Really honor that, maybe spend a couple more minutes after this video to give that side a little bit more love. It's the beauty of doing YouTube videos is you can do that, you're not stuck to the timeline of a regular class. So let your breath just really sink you into this one. Making sure your hips are really square so both hip bones are facing forward. Chest is really proud and bring the carriage back up. Let's finish up just with one final little glute stretch here. So we're gonna sit either on your carriage or on the floor. I'm gonna add a couple springs just so we don't move around. We're gonna go for a seated figure four stretch. So similar to what we did before, I'm gonna cross the right ankle over the left knee, send my tailbone back behind me, please do the same. And you're really just gonna let your weight fall over that leg. Oh man, that is so much more <laughs> intense than when we were lying down. And what you wanna do is not necessarily curve over the leg and let your shoulders collapse. I really encourage you to think about maintaining that open collarbone, let your shoulder blades squeeze together in the back and then hinge at the hip fold over. You should feel a big stretch through those glutes here. And relax, release, left ankle over, right knee. Tailbone goes back behind you, really flare those sit bones. Collarbone wide, shoulder blades, shoulder blades together. Fold at the hip, big breath in, exhale. Release it, cross your legs on the reformer. We're gonna do one more, I lied. There's one more stretch I like for desk workers we're gonna do. So what you're gonna do is serve, hold a tray with your right hand. Ribs are down, send your tailbone back behind you. You're gonna flex your fingers like you have a tray on your hand and you're tilting it. Keeping the shoulders really stable, you're just going to extend the elbow and bend it a little bit. You're gonna feel a nice stretch through that forearm. You may be able to extend all the way. You may just get a few inches. I want for you to find wherever that sticky spot is and just kind of floss it, making sure those fingertips are really flexed. Nice, that one's really good if you type a lot. And let's go for the other side. Last round before I let you go. Hold a tray, tip it down, make sure those shoulders are really even, ribs are down, sit up maybe a couple more centimeters or a couple more inches, and floss it. Good, just bend and extend that elbow again. You may get all the way. You just have a little bit of wiggle room here. Doesn't really matter. Range is not the important part here. Just making sure you feel that stretch through your forearms here. If it starts to feel a little tingly, you can take it to that point and then back off. 
Good. Big breath in, gather your arms up. Open the chest, let your ribs relax. Now you can pop them forward. Open the arms out to the side. Back to center, roll your shoulders back. Big breath in, exhale, stay tall. You are all done, thank you so much. It's a pleasure having you here today. Thank you for everybody who's new here too. Uh, thanks to Julie, Shannon, Jamie, everybody who's leaving me comments and sharing this on your Facebook groups and your social media. It means a huge deal to me. So please also like this video if you liked it, subscribe, come back for more. And again, if you wanna see a longer, more intense version of this, let me know if there's anything else you wanna see. I love to hear it. Thank you so much. See you soon.